What's up, Meta Nerds? This video will be a complete breakdown of the B Wing prototype, going from the origins of the B 6 up to the production of what would be the ASF 01 B Wing, the incredibly complex and powerful starfighter that helped to secure a rebel victory in the Galactic Civil War. Because everything about the B 6 is canon, and it really is such a different ship from the ASF 01, we'll cover that in the next video, because it has quite a long story on its own. But if you truly want to understand the B Wing, you have to know its origins. So let's go back to four years before the Battle of Yavin. The Rebel Alliance was still not officially organized, just a bunch of Rebel cells spread throughout the galaxy, but starting to coalesce under the leadership of Bail Organa and Ahsoka Tano. Phoenix Cell was one of the most notable of these groups, who often worked directly with the Clone Wars veterans Rex and Ahsoka. The Cell was trying to break an Imperial blockade on the planet Ibar, after getting reports from the citizens that the Imps were attempting to starve the unruly population. The first attempt to deliver supplies was repelled, resulting in the loss of a CR-90. They needed something new, something more powerful to punch through the Imperial fleet, but these ships were all the Rebellion had at this time. This is still years before they would even have X-Wings. Luckily, the old clone Rex had an idea. He knew of a genius Mon Calamari shipwright that was hiding out on the planet Chantipole. Who claims to have built a prototype heavy assault starfighter, a blockade buster. Shipmaster Quarry will only discuss his ship in person on the planet Chantipole. The problem was that this planet was infamous among pilots. Every pilot in the galaxy knows it's a one-way trip. The upper atmosphere of Chantipole was covered in miles of thick gas that would be ignited by most of the electronics used by ships, while also having terrain that was covered in spires of rock that just jutted up everywhere. Despite the risk, Kanan agreed with Rex that this was their best shot, and he even gets a nice jab at the cowardly A-Wing pilots before she departs. And no one else is volunteering to go, but I know you will. Hera was one of the best pilots in the Rebellion. She would need to be the one to go. Though she worries that this might just be a waste of time, that the Ibar people were dying as they speak, but Kanan reassures her that this was their only hope. You want me to spell it out for you? We can't beat that blockade. Not without a better ship. And so they had to put all of their hope into Rex's estimation of this mysterious hermit shipbuilder. Zeb and Sabine would accompany Hera, and because of that volatile upper atmosphere, they need to cut all of the ship's systems falling into the planet and gliding their way down to Cory's workshop. After their crash landing, a short, elderly Mon Calamari walks out to greet them, and Phoenix Squad wonders why the Sith would anyone want to build ships in a world like this. Uh, the perfect place to test them. If it can fly here, it can fly anywhere. Cory was happy to show off his creation, a brilliant orange ship that appeared to be just a long strip of metal with no wings, a strange profile that thoroughly confused Zeb and Sabine. That's a ship? Is it upside down? But the fish folk was thoroughly proud, and runs down some of the B6's features and weaponry. High intensity blasters, ion cannons, and proton torpedoes! Hera is sold and can't wait to give it a spin, but the Moncal shuts her down. He has no idea who she is and has no reason to trust her. His craft represented years of hard work, and the sole purpose of his self-imposed exile. I waited a long time for the right pilot. I can wait longer. Defeated and feeling like this was a waste of time, she resigns to just repairing her shuttle, the Phantom. And Cory can't help but get involved in the repairs as well. When he does, he realizes how resourceful she is, and how much she cared about the ship, the Rebellion, and the people on Ibar. The old fish decides that perhaps this was time to let his baby fly. To the Phoenix Squad's surprise, this would be the very first flight of the B-6. to be down here, wishing I was up there, then up there, crashing back down here! Systems engaged, its repulsors bring it up off the landing pad. The feet retract just fine, but as it goes over the edge, the ion engines abruptly cut off. Zeb and Sabine watch mouth agape as they think they just saw Hera's unceremonious death. But just then, the Bladewing races back into view, soaring through the sky with incredible speed. It's unknown how quick this prototype was. It was noted as being remarkably quick, but the later iteration would only have a top atmospheric speed of 950 km per hour, which was slower than the X-Wing and much slower than a TIE fighter. The prototype's armament included three Armec SW-5 ion cannons, two Grill SQD-1NK high-intensity blasters, and Red Snapper proton torpedoes. But this was pretty standard stuff, and Hera was getting disappointed. Perhaps the old army man Rex didn't know his starfighters. I was kind of hoping your ship packed more of a punch, Quarry. Did you pull the big lever on the right? This was the main event. The four corners of the craft engage a beam that focuses and intensifies into an incredibly destructive laser that melts through anything in its path. There are only four things in the galaxy that are known to use this composite beam technology. The beam turret on the LAAT gunship, 
the main gun on the SPHA Walker, the Death Star, and this prototype. This weapon definitely impressed Hera, but she does note that its targeting systems could use some work. And this is where we start to see a really cool merger. The ASF-01 B-Wing that would be developed from this prototype was a combination of one of the best Mon Calamari ship engineers and an expert Randalorian weapon systems engineer. Just what do you think you're doing? Never get between a Mandalorian and a weapons package. Sabine was one of the top engineers in the Empire before she defected, being responsible for the Duchess, an arc cannon weapon that could be affixed to the ATDP, which was ingenious in targeting the alloys unique to the Mandalorian Beskar armor, shutting down their rebellion as her fellow Mandos were turned into dust. So Sabine's touch went into tweaking some of these weapon systems on a platform that was geniusly crafted by one of Mon Cala's best fins. Because though he was a visionary, there were definitely some practical issues with this prototype. The energy drain from the multi-cannon firing system killed the hyperdrive. Well, that has been a problem. The power drain from the composite beam was too much to contain both the weapon and the hyperdrive. So its hyperdrive was shot, but he admits that he couldn't resist upgrading the hyperdrive in the Phantom. Beautiful, crazy Mon Calamari! Phoenix Squad would use the Phantom to work as a sort of transport, with the B6 attached to the underside as it was transported through hyperspace. Meanwhile, Kanan tells Hera that they have to continue with their assault on the blockade, as the Ibar people were able to contact them and were reporting massive starvation. Their whole population was just moments away from an excruciating death. The fight would have to start without her, but then the odd orange blade pops into real space and is accelerating right at the Arquidans in orbit. One ship of unknown design. I would hardly call that reinforcements. Sabine would operate the main beam gun. Arquidan's turbo laser is frantically trying to shoot it down, but the expert piloting by Hera gets them close enough for the B6 to open fire. The composite beam works brilliantly, cutting through the durasteel and setting off all sorts of internal power systems and fuel inside of the Imperial vessel. Agent Callus watches from his bridge in horror, as this weapon gives the rebels a lane to push down to the mountainous regions of Ibar where the supplies are delivered by the Ghost. On its very first mission, the B6 was so powerful that all Callus could do was utter the word impossible, and Quarry is happy to see his creation was in such good hands. The Rebels would make their jump through hyperspace, and Phoenix leader Jun Sato gives even more good news. It seems Senator Organa has found a shipwork sympathetic to our cause, and willing to manufacture more of these B-wings in secret. Under my supervision, of course. This mission also earns Hera a promotion, She's now Phoenix leader, and becomes Captain Hera. So this ship had one of the most impressive introductions to the galaxy of any vessel in history, but it would take a lot of work to turn it into the B-Wing we all know and love. The sympathetic ship works Organa had been in contact with were slain in Corporal. The company was run by the sentient insectoid species known as the Verpine, and as a general rule, the further your species was from looking human, the worse the Empire treated you. They had been the creators of the Republic's Praxis Turbo Speeder, and most notably the V-19 Torrent Starfighter. And although these bugs helped fight off the CIS in the Clone Wars, they ended up like so many other companies that watched as the Empire slowly took over control of all of the means of production, and then shifted almost all of their work to Kuat Drive Yards and Sinar Fleet Systems. Bail Organa was able to get them to stick out their insectoid necks for the Rebellion, pointing out to them that this prototype used a lot of slain and corporal parts and that by using their facility to mass-produce the B-Wings, they could overthrow these human-centered tyrants, along with the promise of lucrative future New Republic contracts. Quarry would go with them to work on Project Chantipole, and Sabine visited the shipyards as well. An interesting note is that the Verpine species were incredibly rare, only found in their colonies on a remote asteroid field, and we have quotes from Sabine describing the species in her sketchbook. While the Rebel Manual mentions that she worked with Quarry to redesign the weapons package, this Mandalorian advanced weapons engineer actively took a role in its redesign, but also with input from rebel leadership, who pointed out that a power and fuel guzzling fighter was not idea for a small rebellion, a rebellion that was always suffering from limited resources, with the manual mentioning that if the prototype was mass produced as it was, it would quote, present technical as well as financial challenges. So let's call it here so that this video can be the complete story of the B6 prototype, and the rest of the story of the B-Wing how it became the most powerful yet insanely complicated starship and bomber of the era, and a full breakdown of its stats and cross-section will all be in the next video. There's a ton of cool details on it from both canon and legends, so it's going to be around 15 minutes on its own. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it, and leave a like and comment about this video if you want to help it in the YouTube algorithm. In the description you'll find links to cool Star Wars art and free audiobooks, as well as our Patreon and PayPal. For just $1 your name could be here, 
And special shout out to our $25 tier, Chris Garcia, Andrew Band, Serif Diaz, Cass Costello, and Carlos Velez. But most important of all, remember, the tricky thing about ruling an empire is that any remote, cloudy planet may contain a fish building a weapon that could topple you. And the Force will be with you, always.